Ladies and gentlemen, I'm from the Manufacturing Department of Huawei Technologies Co. Limited. I have 20 years of experience in the manufacturing industry, and I have also witnessed Huawei smart manufacturing development. Today, I would like to talk about creating a lean production era in digital factories, Huawei smart manufacturing practices, which is composed of two parts. Why did Huawei implement smart manufacturing? Huawei smart manufacturing practice. Why is smart manufacturing important? It is essential for a manufacturing enterprise to improve production efficiency, expedite the go-to-market process, and enhance competitiveness, especially in the core areas. The new technologies, tools, and methods do not change what we manufacture, but enable how we do it and bring huge benefits. Huawei has taken three steps to implement smart manufacturing. First, mass automation. Second, full digital coverage. Third, building smart campuses. In this process, Huawei insists on centering on customer needs and creating value. Our six design principles are customer centricity, lean production, quality first, design for manufacturing, return on investments, as well as supporting processes, organizations, and talent. Huawei has defined a technology roadmap for smart factories. First, automation. Second, digitization. Third, connectivity. Fifth, intelligence. Lean production underpins Huawei's smart manufacturing initiative. We wanted to ensure that we built on the lessons learned. We implemented Six Sigma of total quality management and lean production to provide for quality assurance. Based on our 20 plus years of lean practice, we gradually realized automation, digitization, and intelligence. Huawei started to promote lean production in 1996. It has been five years since we started to implement smart manufacturing in 2015. Huawei adopts the industry's five-level framework for smart manufacturing. Its core components are lean production as the basis, three flows, and one cloud. It taps into the value chain technologies such as IoT and 5G and embraces cloud computing, big data, and AI for dynamic management of resources, which constitute a high-quality, lean, and highly automated manufacturing system. The three flows are engineering data flow, business information flow, and production technology flow. One cloud refers to the upgrades Huawei has completed from MES to MES+. Plus. Let me explain in greater details about the three flows and one cloud. The engineering data flow integrates design data with manufacturing data, bridging the gap between R&D and manufacturing. R&D and manufacturing teams collaborate on the same platform. The digital manufacturing is embedded in Huawei's IPD process. The trial production is linked with virtual simulation and verification. The production is linked with processing, assembly, testing, and shipment in manufacturing. Problems spotted in these manufacturing activities are sent back to R&D right away so that R&D can act on improving quality. The engineering data flow helps reduce DFM issues by 30%. 
The business information flow is about seamlessly sharing customer order information with manufacturing. When a massively customized order comes in, it automatically flows to manufacturing and triggers the preparation of a whole set of materials and automatic scheduling. In the manufacturing process, the customer can see real-time status of its order. The production technology flow is based on machine-to-machine -machine connections across different levels. Key assets are connected to deliver production automation and certain level of intelligence. MES MES Plus embraces software-defined manufacturing. It improves quality, productivity, overall equipment effectiveness, and reduces power consumption for greener manufacturing. Traditionally, MES served to manage the production process. Cloud-based MES or MES Plus is the upgraded version of MES adding smart manufacturing know-how to the system to boost productivity. The three-level system enables modularized design, component-based development, and distributed deployment. The cloud technology allows scalability and adaptive scheduling that fit the needs of different businesses in Huawei, such as the ICT infrastructure, consumer business, and the intelligent automotive solution. The cloud-based mess can effectively satisfy the needs of various businesses. We have explored the use of big data and artificial intelligence in smart manufacturing. We strive to transform from reactive error correction to predictive and preventive management. Just like what the healthcare industry calls diagnostic care and preventive care, we are transitioning from diagnostic care to more preventive care. To give you some examples of the use of big data and AI, big data was used for flagging quality issues and closed-loop management and for smart maintenance of equipment. Big data analytics and modeling contributed to more efficient use of manufacturing capacity and shortened the time for delivery to customers. We have also explored how to optimize the AGVs with big data. Uh, AGV refers to automated guided vehicles. We ran data models to optimize the AGV loads and logistics so that they are 20% more efficient. Because of the five years of dedicated efforts, we have successfully built the Huawei E2C smart manufacturing and factories by implementing the three flows and one cloud smart manufacturing solution. It covers the end-to-end -end process from the suppliers to the customers. It has the following features, full process automated, pool distribution, intelligent automation, digital production, and mass customization. Over the five years, Huawei has worked on data modeling, data objects, and data standards, as well as the underlying data foundation to provide for end-to-end -end process visualized data operations. The data system provides real-time visibility for the status of orders, deliveries, quality, and shop floor operations of our global factories so that the company is able to make informed decisions more efficiently. 5G is the buzzword. Huawei has also explored how to use it. Its defining features include large bandwidth, low latency, and slicing technology. We have addressed 
some pain points in factories with the 5G enabled location technology. For example, smart authentication of employees, geofencing for hazardous areas, search of materials, automatic AGV dispatching, pinpointing faults real time in the field, and triggering the ANDAM system. All of these are areas we have explored the potential of 5G enabled location technology. In the past five years, we have successfully built smart manufacturing lines, smart shop floors, and smart factories. We are planning on building smart manufacturing campers in Huawei Dongguan Songshan Lake campers. The idea is to implement a suite of solutions such as smart manufacturing, smart logistics, smart mobility, safe campers, efficient power, digital services and operations. It will be a coordinated, secure, efficient and green smart manufacturing campers. That is all. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Chen Yun from FAW's Digital Department. I want to share with you how digital technology enables smart manufacturing, a deep dive into Hongqi digital factories. A brief introduction to Hongqi. Hongqi is a symbol of Chinese spirit. It's recognized as a national car. Over the last years, we've had transformative changes across the company. Employee morale is high, and that's the backdrop of our digital transformation. As of now, we've seen um, some positive results. From the models we've launched recently, you can see the iteration of the launch becomes faster, the efficiency becomes higher. The digital transformation has played a very important role. The strong momentum and employee morale is particularly high after President Xi's visit to FAW this year. Next, I want to share with you the strategic planning of uh, Hongqi's digital transformation. Our vision is digital technology drives wonderful travel. Digital-driven smart manufacturing I'm sharing today is part of that. The whole idea is to ensure all businesses are always online, timely analyzed and intelligently managed. And that idea spans across R&D, manufacturing, and marketing. In order to ensure all businesses are always online, we must have a set of uh, controllable cloud-native technology framework. That's why we've set up uh, business and data middle platforms, as well as technology architecture, where well, technolo technology stack is fully controllable, so that our users, R&D, product, and the entire enterprise can uh, work on top of the platform. That actually drives the changes in the way we work. Comprehensive R&D. The most important thing here is the IPD process. We must first streamline the process and digitalize it. We also emphasize the importance of a simulation. The autonomous driving simula simulation software ties together with the pilot run and the commercial operation to improve simulation ability. That's a key to improving R&D efficiency, comprehensive manufacturing. We want to build a smart manufacturing system with extensive connectivity, flexible supply, efficient allocation, and high quality, or build upon 5G and an industrial internet platform. Comprehensive marketing. We did transformation for marketing last year. That's well, we've been moving the fastest in our transformation program. We opened up the entire customer journey. We look at all the activities that tie together with our customers, distributors, uh, sales and service reps, as well as every link in the supply chain, and migrate them to the Hongqi customer cloud. We define business rules, we extract them into platform components, 
to collect the data. Last year, we did that for Hongqi brands. This year, we're going to do that for Benton brands. Only with more business rules and more platform components, we can be more agile in front-end application development. For example, the different little matrix for Hongqi, the development cycle has been reduced from six weeks to four weeks to hopefully two weeks in the future. That all builds upon the capability we have on the middle platforms. We're all moving toward that direction. Well, touch points will become lightweight, flexible, with more compelling experience. And the middle platforms will become more powerful because that's where all the experiences are pulled together. That's one of the biggest lessons learned in our transformation in marketing. Other domains are moving toward the same direction, and our marketing teams are also experimenting around how data can better drive a businesses. Enterprise operation. Enterprise operation is also redefining itself. We are rebuilding our ERP system, OA, and the ERP software packages were designed to complete a given task. The focus was not on user experience, quickness, and the data uh, analysis for efficiency. But now, we decouple our businesses, especially the ERP package, so that it's cloud ready, even though we have not done cloud migration. After the recoupling, we reopen it, we reorganize it, so that those capabilities can be made available on the enterprise middle platforms. In the past, individuals go and find their tasks. Now, tasks go after specific individuals. The role-based uh, uh, app will tell the specific individuals to go to either PDM or the MOM system to find the job or the tasks they are supposed to do. It's all done in an automatic way. Enterprise operation becomes faster, communication efficiency goes higher. Our leadership has asked us to improve enterprise operation efficiency by 30% year on year. That's because we have this middle platform service framework for op uh, operation. Data operation. We centrally manage data right now. Normally, business uh, data should reside in um, business activities. At this point of time, we manage it centrally so that people could be more aware of the value of data and how data can better drive a business. You have data generated from business activities, and then those data can be used to, to drive a further business innovation. We build up an algorithm center, we build up data models so that the data can more precisely uh, direct the business operations. So that's the notion of the value operation. We have technology middle platforms, data, and the business middle platforms. We have a value, uh, operation, value added data operations. They're all built on the Hongqi Intelligent Cloud. It's a hybrid cloud allowing us to decouple from given uh, cloud providers while ensuring flexibility to ensure um, migration so that we can rest assured as we move forward. Of course, that would be transfer pricing. If we ask for more than what is budgeted, they're going to charge us. So this is the dual engine model for the IT uh, stack to enable uh, business. Just now is a snapshot of our digital transformation. Now let's zoom in to look at the Hongqi Digital Factory. Starting from the end of 2019, we spent around six months to build up what we call 3 plus 1 uh, model. 3 meaning 3 closed loops and 3 main lines. 3 main lines being the process, supply chain, and quality management, which all integrate with the MOM system. Uh, manufacturing operation system to form three closed loops, allowing end-to-end -end integration from IPD, OTD, and uh, even CSP. Since you are experts in the domain, so I want to share with you this particular point. Why we can do 3 plus 1? That's because we had started the business restructuring in the first place. Manufacturing had already completed 
A future proof of redefinition of the business process. In other words, the foundation of a digitalization is you have a established, mature, and leading business processes. After we have the three plus one model, we actually find the priority we should really pursue on digital transformation. We must have a digital journey of the products spanning across the entire value chain, from R and D to manufacturing to marketing, or even service and operation. Once the vehicles are out on the road. We have this digital journey spanning across all the value chain, and this is going to be、uh, the priority for our future work. For digital factory, we want to build up what we call manufacturing twins. When a physical car goes offline, the digital car,、uh, the a digital car goes online. The digital car. Sits in a virtual environment. Whenever you have a problem, you should first go to the virtual environment, extract the digital car, look at it, try it out, so that you can reduce the social cost on the physical cars. And we have some initial thoughts regarding the. Manufacturing、uh, twins. Previously, maybe you have a 1 kb data for car ve or vehicle labeling. Now we need to include the simulation, the 3D、uh, data. Previously, you may need, only need、uh, several dozens of a kb to represent a car, but now that number is、uh, dozens of、uh, uh, gb. But the value from there is enormous. Now I'm going to share with you.、Uh, What does manufacturing twin mean for every workshop? I'm going to start from the stamping workshop. We have end-to-end -end and all-around digital management here. One thing I want to highlight is sheet metal parts with ID information for enhanced quality tracing for every material from inbound.、Uh, they have the ID information all the way. Till when they become a sheet metal component that go into the vehicle, the material is identifiable from the very beginning. For example, from Baustil, one of our partners, the supply material, the steel has ID information from the first place. That paves the way for RFID for first in first out management、um, and other.、Uh, Um, techniques. All the equipment in the stamping workshop are connected because connectivity is the foundation for smart manufacturing. All the equipment in the stamping workshop is connected to the IoT platform to allow coordination with、uh, planning to improve efficiency. After leaving the stamping workshop, we can also see what additional information we have for the digital car. We actually develop a complete digital archive. The next step is welding. We have a dual driver and automatic welding workshop there. Welding is highly automated. What we are going to do there? Is to drive a full integration between IT and OT, so that the welding workshop knows its operation. Previously, each equipment knows what it's doing. Now, the whole workshop knows what it's doing、uh, against a bigger、uh, picture. Every equipment is automated itself, and it also connects to the IoT platform. It's driven by planning and ordering, and we can do virtual、um, prior、uh, commissioning of the simulation environment. Welding is highly automated, as I mentioned just now, and we can make a judgment whether there is unnecessary waste. There are many industrial internet applications that are generated from this workshop. As you can see from the bottom right, we can collect the information of a production of the、um, production lines and keep. Driving constant optimization. 5G and the industrial internet has played a very important role here, and also digital car has a role there. You have the product digital model, digital car body information, process device, and quality information that will be added to the digital archive of the vehicle. We move on to the painting workshop. The workshop has closed environment and is also highly automated. What we do there? 
is to build digital twins that are order driven. Energy management is also very important here. Every light and other energy source will be able to read the plan and will power on or power off automatically, which can reduce uh, uh, unnecessary waste and improve efficiency as well. After leaving the stamping workshop, there are additional information to the digital car, like color, quality, and equipment status information, which can be used for painting and uh, other um, um, purposes. Assembly. For assembly workshop is about a smart and automated experience. As well, we have built a 5G plus industrial internet infrastructure. China Unicom helped us to build probably China's first 5G full coverage factory. We completed this business uh, digitalization in this workshop. Uh, team leaders, they have repetitive work, which have already been digitalized and uh, automatically managed. And now we are using industrial internet so that the data can be used to provide different capabilities. As you can see, there are two charts on the slide. One is AGV that are almost everywhere in the factory. Hongqi factory is probably the first factory we have amended logistics operations. You have industrial AGV, you have logistic AGV. How to ensure you have no interference between AGVs while still ensuring they can recognize each other. That's where the dispatching platform comes in. And we also have um, the yellow uh, crane. We have a lot of uh, sensing devices on its arm while we collect the uh, information. Well, we can do different types of forecasting of the motors, its quality information, its running status, so that we can do uh, preventive maintenance. Quality is the top priority for Hongqi. And how to manage both the process quality as well as the outcome quality. That's why we spend a lot of efforts in our mom system. Because if you don't manage well, it's going to be time consuming. But if you don't manage the process, you cannot ensure the ultimate quality. And all the equipment is connected. For example, the printing of a certificate is done by machines, not manually like we did in the past. It's one of the typical applications in industrial internet. We wanted the assembly workshop to be smart uh, and ultimate. Just now, I walked you through the four workshops. Overall, you must have a global visualization. Every seat, every location, every production step must be displayed in real time on the dashboard so that you can know whether it's running normally, whether there are pre-warnings. Only when everything is connected, you can have that visibility. That's a very typical application of inter uh, Internet of Everything. I mentioned this just now about digital car. I want to iterate. When the physical car goes offline, the digital car goes online. And digital car will bring enormous value to the entire um, process. Moving forward, Hongqi has clear objectives and strategies for future production. We hope by further enabling digitalization, by 2025, all Hongqi factories will greatly improve its productivity, uh, production capacity. All Hongqi employees will make every effort to digitalize work scenarios from ordering to the end process and take all possible measures to achieve objectives. New Hongqi, live your dream. Thank you. Hello, I'm Zhang Haifeng from Guangxi Liuzhou Steel Co. Limited. Very honored to discuss with you industrial internet for iron and steel. In China, over 900 million people have access to the internet. 
Internet Plus has become trendy since 2000 and proved successful in consumer, government, education, and healthcare services. The Internet Plus has given birth to many excellent service providers like Meituan, JD.com, and Taobao for consumer services, Didi and Shared Bikes for the sharing economy, Yunmanman and Huochebang for logistics. They have given a strong boost to the economy. But comparatively, the industrial internet has been developing at a slower pace. Some people were saying internet plus industry. Some others were saying industry plus internet. There had long been disputes between these two sides. Until 2018, the State Council of China defined industrial internet as a key pillar for high-quality industrial development. In January 2018, the MIIT issued the guidelines for industrial internet development. Industrial internet has been incorporated in the government's work report of that year. Then how is industrial internet different from the Internet Plus? The industrial internet is based on the real economy. It requires abundant, customized services. The one-size-fits-all approach does not work. Some companies started to provide industrial internet platforms in 2019, such as Hire's Cosmo platform and BONC's CloudDip. We are seeing more of these, but industrial applications are still falling short. Given its many custom requirements, no single platform is able to satisfy all the needs. Then, Let's look at the different types of industry. There are two types, discrete versus process manufacturing. Discrete variables are countable in a finite amount of time. It is not a continuous time function, like machinery, automobile, and aeronautic manufacturing. The process variables are not countable in a finite amount of time. It is a continuous time function, like steel energy and chemical manufacturing. These two types have different product categories, complexity, levels of automation, and processes. You can look at this table. Discrete industry have more product categories than the process industry. Then let's specifically talk about the iron and steel sector. It is faced with many challenges in embracing industrial internet. As the iron and steel companies are typical traditional businesses with R&D, procurement, production, and sales functions, which are not digital native. The first challenge is its various functions from IND, procurement, production, sales to services, and complex processes from mineral dressing, sintering, iron making, steel making to rolling. You can refer to the process chart for the typical flows, including material flow, energy flow, and information flow. The second challenge is its legacy system and data structures. Steel companies normally enjoy long histories. Our company was founded in 1958. It is now 62 years old. We have deployed many systems. It is typical for one system and database to support one process. We ended up with siloed databases, languages, and IT systems. The third challenge is the integration of industrial know-how. 
There are complex interactions between the three flows: the material flow, energy flow, and information flow. The production procedures are long, and processes are diverse. Continuous and non-continuous processing coexist, as well as batch processing. And harsh environments, such as high temperature, high pressure, and intense dust generation. Therefore, when embracing industrial internet, it is hard to realize online detection, interconnectivity, cross-function coordination, and model for chemical reactions. We tried reward model. But it is not quite getting there. We find out that、uh, the few operations a bit from different from the reward model. It is harder to mitigate risks when sharing data. Without information security, major accidents and even casualties may occur at the iron and steel plants. That is why we set a high bar for information security. Next, I will talk about the initiatives Liu Zhou Steel has taken for industrial internet in recent years. First, we developed both business and IT with organizational support. Last year, we placed both IT and digital business in the operations department. This initiative aims to fully integrate IT with production, with the right level of organizational support. The industrial internet solution covers network and communications technology, control theory and methods, and computer science. At the core is industrial know-how. And how to integrate IT with industrial know-how, and how to have computers effectively acquire industrial know-how. These are very important questions. Second, we built a centralized data and application platform. This is the technical support. Since 2015. We have performed central IT planning to unify data standards, ICT infrastructure, data sources, applications, and data management. We have built up an industrial internet platform architecture for the iron and steel sector. Third, we optimized our business model and efficiency with the IT technologies, especially the 5G technology. Let me talk more about it. We have done a thorough analysis of our production processes from the stockyards, sintering, coking, forging, casting to rolling. We looked at areas we could use 5G to improve business operation and efficiency. For the activities before iron making and after steel making. We found out that 16 to 17 activities for potential use of autonomous technology, and 13 ones for machine vision applications. Smart warehousing is a typical example that needs 5G for communication. Another example is autonomous stockyards, where tending equipment needs 5G for communication. Smart campers again needs 5G to transmit large amounts of CCTV footage. We revealed our whole processes in the iron and steel plants to find potential opportunities for autonomous applications, machine vision, and 5G enablement. 
Next, let me introduce our company, Dongxin Company, under Liuzhou Steel Corporation. The corporate five-year strategy specified the need to embrace IT technology. Our company was set up in response to the industrial internet. We keep expanding our operations, currently building Liuzhou Base, Fangcheng Gang Base, and Yuling Base for stainless steel. All three require IT technologies. Dongxin aims to develop our own industrial internet platform and services. We want to develop uh, our own systems that are implemented on the industrial internet platform. Next page is basic information of our company. Because of our efforts in the in-house R&D capabilities, we have built up our own systems, such as the distribution, logistics, procurement, quality management, and mass systems. All of these are efforts of our in-house R&D. Electronic notarization system is the first system I would like to specify. We launched it in March this year, despite the pandemic. You know, the traditional way of signing a contract is like this. Party A signs, then send it to Party B. They sign it and send it back to us. It takes at least one week. With this system in place, the customer can complete a contract signing within 30 seconds, wherever and whenever they are. It's got a notarization feature, which means that all the signatures put through the system is legal binding. It can be applied to not just contracts, but any documents with which relevant parties enter into a contract. So far, we have applied the system to over 100 companies. Second, the distribution management system. It covers the process from order entry, production, warehouse inbound and outbound management, and delivery by train, ship, and truck to reach the customers. We have implemented mobile technology, GIS technology, IoT, and image recognition, etc., to enhance efficiency and security. Third, the procurement system. It is used for managing raw materials such as coal and other mining resources. It starts with purchase requirement, order, signing contracts, payments, and analytics. It is closely linked with our production system so that it offers great visibility for stock levels and price forecasts for smarter decisions for procurement. It helps with our cost reduction goals. Fourth, supply chain management system. Distributors can use the system to manage the whole processes from procurement to sales. At the same time, it connects the downstream with upstream as it is connected with Liu Gang internal systems, creating better synergy and more efficient sell-in so that uh, we can help the distributors become more efficient. Next is mess for iron and steel plants. Because Dongxing's parent company has iron and steel plants, we know the field operation and processes very well. MES is one of our top priorities in system design. It is used for processing, scheduling, and quality assurance. We need to deliver quality consistent with the planned goals. 
We need to ensure the mass meets on-site needs at uh, different levels across the shop floor, plant, and company so that it can better satisfy the needs of our employees at the front. Fifth, the smart manufacturing system. We use the drones to record video of the stockyards and upload them to our servers via 5G. We apply the monocular vision to build 3D models for complex material surfaces. They are great inputs for procurement decisions. Sixth, the molten iron distribution system. It is an important bridge before iron making and steel making mess. We have a bit more steel capacity than the iron capacity. So the bridge in between is essential as it decides the volume of the molten iron for steel making when and where. The distribution process is a complex one, and it is key to capacity coordination. Here is a real tracing diagram. Seventh, the industrial apps. Dongxin Company is now able to collect, screen, and analyze on-site data. The results are shown in the applications which help the engineers and plant managers make better decisions. The applications provide real-time operational status that guide on-site activities. Last but not the least, open cooperation. We act by the principle of openness and win-win results. In 2017, we worked with five universities to launch smart manufacturing labs. We have applied to undertake national projects. One is the digital twin system for process manufacturing based on industrial internet platforms. This year, we have been awarded the MIIT's IPv6 project. We are seeking participation in the NNSF project, basic theory and key technologies for iron making systems optimization. We are actively cooperating with Huawei to explore how to use 5G on a larger scale in iron and steel plants. We always believe in integrity, openness, and sharing in our partnerships with companies. Together, let's move forward industrial internet for iron and steel. That is all. Thank you.